Hello guys and uh, welcome to this new video. So uh, I'm making a recap of the second round of the Russian Super Final 2015 um, and uh, we'll watch uh, two games today, two highlights I guess uh, for me, the, the two highlights of the day for me. Uh, so the first game we'll watch the full games between uh, Vityukov and Bukavshin. So Vityukov started d45, c4, so Queen's Gambit declined, knight c3, c6, so we go to a Slav e3, knight to f6, pawn to b3. So this is a tricky move order uh, played by Vitugov. I didn't find a lot of game in the database. Uh, so bishop d6, bishop b2, castle, bishop d3. And here, uh, Bukavshin might have uh, go back to the to the main variation if he went, uh, okay, he, he went e5, but he could have tried to go knight bd7 uh, and after knight f3, rook e8, uh, we are back in a well-known position. But um, he, he didn't play that way. Um, he went uh, e5. So nobody knows what would have been played after knight bd7. Maybe there were some tricky ideas by Vitugov. Uh, so e5. Pawn takes e5. Bishop takes e5. This is like pretty much for the moment. Knight f3, attacking the bishop. So Bukavshin uh, plays uh, the move bishop g4, spinning the knights is pretty logical. Queen c2, unpinning the knight. Again, make a pin, we unpin that, and we have a look at the h7 pawn already. This is a, a pretty classical setup in, in the in the, in the the Meron, uh, in the Slav. The bishop on d3, queen on c2, the bishop on b2, knight on c3. Uh, bishop takes f3, pawn takes f3, so giving up uh, the bishop for the double pawns, but now the g file is, is opened. And uh, here Bukavshin decided to go pawn to d4. I watched a bit the game, and uh, I think the move knight a6 uh, was more interesting in order to bring the knight to b4, attacking uh, the queen and the bishop. So white man have played a3, knight c5 attacking the bishop again, and bishop e2. This position is really unclear as uh, white can always go long castle here, play f4. They, they can even also short castle king h1, bishop, uh, rook g1 because the light square bishop disappeared. So there are no, no, no many risks on the light squares. It's really hard for me to assess this position. It was pretty clear, but uh, after you, you will see what happened with the game. It's uh, better than the move d4 that was played. So let's move the pawn to d4. Knight e2, and uh, you will see the conception Vitugov had, and, and Bukavshin didn't quite understand. So here, uh, he played queen a5. Uh, you will see why it, it was a bad move. Uh, sorry, cancel. He, he would better go c5, f4, bishop d6, pawn d4, pawn d4, long castle, knight c6. Uh, with an advantage for white. So here the plan for black is to go uh, b5, uh, knight b4, rook c8, like those three moves to open up the the, the king, uh, and white wanna play rook g1 and has some play on the g file, also the h7 pawn really attacked. But the thing here, I don't want to go into details, but white has the move knight takes d4, uh, which uh, which leads to an advantage. But I don't want to go to details, it's just, uh, just to show you uh, what could have been played. So knight e2, he didn't go so c5, he went knight a5. Here, if Vitugov goes uh, king f1, so he played b4. But if he goes just king f1, pawn takes d3, b4. Uh, the thing is that uh, the bishop is protected by the queen. So b4, queen c7, and uh, here uh, black is better because we are losing a pawn and the king uh, will be a bit naked. So this is this is not uh, this is not uh, a good position. It's also very coming very quickly. The pieces are coming very quickly. So for queen a5, Vitugov plays a really really good move. He goes b4 first, forcing the queen to take to keep the check. Because I mean, if you go backward, I just take your pawn. So queen takes b4, and now king f1. And uh, the thing was really hard to understand, I mean, I could not feel that when I watched the game live, is that uh, the king 
here is going to be really safe because nobody is coming to check it. Like it's totally safe on F1 and the thing is that this rook is totally enormous when it comes to G1 and uh, and I mean it's a very strong attacking piece. Look at that. It's making a combo with the bishop. The H7 uh, spot is also really uh, well attacked already and, and, and it's it's already plus one on the computer and it's very very hard to defend. You will see how it happens. So c5, keeping the pawn. You don't want to open this diagonal, obviously. Uh, because this bishop is going to be a monster. Pawn to f4, hitting the bishop. Bishop d6. Pawn takes d4. All that is more or less forced. King bd7. Rook g1 now. Attacking the open file. Here, uh, Bukavshin better ignored. He plays g6 here. But he better would have uh, continues by, by example, uh, rook f8 and for the moment ignore the, 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 the g7 spot. But he went g6, rook b1, so asking a question to, to the queen, queen a5, and now the move f5. So he's threatening to take, take, and take with the bishop, with the queen coming in. So here he played an interesting, not not really bad move, I mean, here it's already a big advantage for white. Uh, he, and he decided to play uh, a very interesting defensive move, guys. Um, here it's not working because it's already it's already <laughs> impossible to defend, but he played the move g5. Uh, what I like in the conception in this move uh, is that you're totally closing the, um, the diagonal. And I mean, if there was no bishop here on b2, which is a big if, uh, it would be hard for for white just to continue the attack because un un until this is uh, this is this is blocked on f5, like you go king h8, rook g8, and you just start uh, to challenge the g file. Just here there is a, a, a big but is uh, is uh, this bishop on b2. So g5 is just met here by queen c1, king h8, so moving away. Pawn takes c5. Now the bishop pins the knight, and we could see moves like knight g knight g3, knight h5, knight g3, knight e4, or knight c3, knight d5 coming just to add a pressure on this knight. So black goes bishop e7. Doesn't want to lose the tempo taking the pawn. He better uh, immediately uh, protect the, the the knight. Now bishop d4. Opening the file for the rook, so he attacks the b7 pawn, and then he would attack the knight, because this one is pinned, as you see. And he still has, in all the variation, queen takes g5, turning the, the checkmate on g7. So bishop d4, it's a good move. It's just like, he's not in a rush. I mean, everything is standing for black. Here black went uh, queen c7, just showing after knight c5, queen g5, straining the checkmate. Rook g8, bishop f6, bishop f6, queen f6, check, rook g7, queen g7, checkmate. So you cannot take the pawn, and black goes queen c7. Here, um, Vitugov goes uh, bishop e4, so he's eating the pawn once more. Look at those bishops in the center. So many squares, uh, so, many, so many squares are or seen by those bishops, they really control the board, control the center. Rook a b8, and here uh, Vitugov missed a uh, pretty beautiful win. Uh, he played knight c3, but uh, he could have gone uh, rook takes b7, rook takes b7, queen g5, and here you cannot stop the checkmate on g7. I mean, look at that, just give you a few seconds, but you cannot do anything to stop that. You cannot move the, b the knight backward because there is the king. The only move that might come to mind is rook g8, which is made by queen takes g8, checkmate. It's a shame Vitugov didn't see that. He just went simply knight c3, going toward d5 with the knight. h6, protects the pawn. Knight d5, queen d8, protecting the knight. And now, uh, Vitugov played uh, h4, which is a really good move, but he missed beautiful 
rook g5 it means it didn't really miss that because you just don't want to take risk when you are sure to win as we said you don't need to win a game two times in a row queen takes g5 and here you cannot do nothing for to stop rook b3 rook a3 checkmate if you go by example rook g8 you are just checkmated on h6 and uh, this one is really pretty as well because you cannot stop the rook transfer <laughs> the knight is pinned everybody is pinned i mean you might go by example bishop c5 Oh yeah, bishop c5, but it's met by, uh, I don't know, knight takes f6. I don't watch that line before. I mean, if bishop takes d4, queen h6, checkmate. So, I mean, so many checkmates all over the place. So, he went, uh, after queen d8, he went h4. Also a good move, I mean, attacking the pawn. Bishop c5, pawn g5, bishop d4, and pawn takes f6. Threatening queen h6 checkmate. Uh, here, Bukavshin resigned. Uh, the only thing we could think to make is king h7, but it's met by rook g7, king h8, and queen takes h6 checkmate. So, a great win by Vitugo 3 in style. So, it's the first game uh, I wanted to show you. Uh, so, we'll go to the second game. So, it was Vitugo Brilliancy. And now we'll go to the game Motilev against Kaihulin. Kaihulin probably is uh, said in Russian. So we are pretty much advanced in the game. Uh, here, uh, Motilov has, uh, has an advantage and he goes knight a2. So knight a2, the key move of the game because it's a blunder. Now, um, Kai Hulin goes knight x c2 and black and white can't retake the knight because if you take the knight, black plays rook takes b2, and when you move the rook, the queen away, queen f2, king h1, queen g2, checkmate. So that's the blunder. You cannot retake the knight. He went queen takes a6. So just 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 to come back after knight a2, knight takes c2, you just gave up a piece. Queen a6. So knight on a2 is just carried away. I mean, you have to play knight c3 back. Rook, uh, king d7. And here it seems that uh, the, the, the things that Motilov really um, blundered is that he thought that after rook takes d5, uh, black had to play bishop takes and he could win the queen. But the thing is that you can just simply play king e 7 and there are no more checks. The king is perfectly safe and you are just a piece up. So after king d7, he goes back knight d3, knight a2, knight c, no, knight c3, sorry. Now black is uh, really cold blooded. He goes knight takes c1, knight takes d5, so you cannot take the knight, but sure, he goes queen e5. And why do I say he's cold blooded? It's because it was a zeit knot. And uh, well, he didn't have like a minute on the clock, but he had like five, 10 minutes on the clock. And after queen e5, you, you, you get to see that white doesn't have a useful check. By example, if you go knight x c7, black simply goes king e7, queen a7, and king f6. And the thing is that when the king lands on f6, I mean, we are a rook and a piece up, and white is just, uh, I mean, you just have a knight, a queen, and a rook. You just have three pieces, and two of them are on the queen side of the board. And the king is already going to the king side, and even if you have a slight weakness on g5, um, I mean, the king is, is, is beat up, and you don't have a dark square bishop uh, to make checks. And I mean, just with a knight, a queen, and a rook, you can't do anything. So, queen e5, white doesn't have any good check. He tries to play c6. It's still not finished. I mean, you still have to, to produce the move with black. King e8, queen a7. It's continuing to attack. The king cannot move further. On the seven rank, so rook d8, knight x c7, and now that's the last, um, the last beautiful move uh, by Black. I give you, let's say five seconds, or you can pause the video to find that. Okay, so Black goes queen x c7, queen x c7, and rook d1, threatening checkmate, queen b8, king e7, and now if uh, if white retakes the rook, 
Black plays knight f3, and this is the checkmate. Double checkmate. I always love the double checkmate. I find it beautiful. So white goes queen b4 check, king f6, queen c3 check, king g6. White is running out of checks. King f1 and rook e8. Uh, white resigns here because after king e2, if you try to go away, uh, your opponent might play. Sorry, swords and off lines. Maybe bishop g4 is the most beautiful. Bishop g4, king f1, knight d3 check, queen e1. And we can take with the knight if we want to humiliate our opponent, but I think we just go rook takes. And, uh, and this is a checkmate. So we had some brilliancy uh, by uh, Vituga first, and uh, now we just uh, we just witnesses a very very costly uh, blunder by Motilev knight a2. A lot of uh, moves were doing much better than his knight a2. He wanted to carry the knight away, but he forgot that after rook d5 check, there are, there is not only bishop d5 but also a smooth move like king e7. So now let's have a look at the standings. So at the standings, what do we have? Uh, we have Vitugov, Hyrulin, the two guys uh, we, we saw the game um, just now. So they have one and a half out of two, both of them. Uh, Karyakin and Tomaszewski are also in the lead, sharing the first place, four players for the moment. We can see that uh, Ilda Hyrulin is the only player under 2,700 to share the first place. Yakovenko, Dubov, Lise, Svidler, Artemiev, with two draws in the first two games. And Motilev, Bukavshin, Rizmatulin uh, trailing uh, Rizmatulin uh, zero out of two after uh, a bad uh, first game. Uh, he, he did, uh, he, did um, he, g he gave up a neck change, a rook for, for, for a knight today. He had a good position, but uh, he finally lost. So the result of the day is uh, some calm draws between uh, between uh, Lise and Karyakin. A bit more of a fight between Zvidler and Yakovenko. We didn't see the game. Uh, I didn't watch the game dub of Artemiev, frankly speaking, so I won't I won't lie to you. Um, and uh, yeah, the game about uh, between Rizmatulin and Tomaszewski was interesting. I recommend you to to, to have a look. Uh, an exchange sacrifice by Rizmatulin, but didn't, didn't pay off. Uh, so tomorrow we will have uh, Hyrulin Zvidler Artemiev, Motilev, Bukavshin, Dubov, Koryakin, Vitugov. This one might be interesting, Koryakin, Vitugov. Uh, they, are, they, they both are in the lead. So, Koryakin, Vitugov, yeah, they both have a one and a half. So, it might be an interesting game for, for, the, for the standings. And, uh, well, Yakovenko, Rizma, Tulin, Tomaszewski, Lise. So, I wish you uh, good luck uh, for your chess uh, journey if you, if you play today. And uh, see you tomorrow for the round three. Goodbye.